Hello, dear readers, and welcome to this new Wasp Top 10 Vulnerabilities episode. In this video, you will learn one of the most impactful vulnerabilities which some bug bounty hunters specialize in, yet many security testers overlook it. Today's video is about security misconfiguration. First, we need to start from a common base which is a good definition. Then we will move to some flaws related to security misconfiguration. And in this section, we will discover how a security researcher got hacked and how a bug bounty hunter accessed multiple admin portals. And then we will move to some real world examples where we will see some breaches, reports of bug bounty hunters. But most importantly, we will explore a great stream talking about how a security researcher found more than 90k dollars by exploiting security misconfigurations. And finally, we will talk about some security misconfiguration impacts. If you are also interested in how to prevent security misconfiguration, I invite you to read the remaining part in the blog post, which is linked in the description box. You might find the name a bit vague, that's because security misconfiguration can be found on many contexts. But in general, security misconfiguration happens when the responsible party fails to follow best practices when configuring an asset. This asset can be either an operating system, a web server, a software running on a machine, etc. Security misconfigurations don't affect web assets only. Any component which requires a configuration is subject to this vulnerability. This means that network devices, hardware, email services, etc. all can suffer from this vulnerability. Now let's see some flaws related to security misconfiguration. This section is important because it will help you put yourself in the head of the builder, the developer or the DevOps engineer or the operation engineer and will help you understand how security misconfigurations can be found. This is not a complete list, but it is enough for you to give you a clear idea. First, we have debugging. Many companies have separate environments. They enable debugging in a development environment to help them in the debugging process. However, some companies forget to disable it in the production environment. Therefore, an attacker can trigger verbose errors containing internal data. Another security misconfiguration flaw is incorrect permissions. Well, sometimes developers forget to properly set permissions on publicly exposed directories, admin consoles, or dashboards. Therefore, attackers can access unauthorized files. This might be confusing with the broken access control vulnerability in the OWASP top 10, but the root cause here happens to be a misconfiguration issue. In fact, before even reaching any web application feature, the attacker can access some files or dashboards, etc. Now, let's have a look at Patrick's blog post where he was able to steal the HD access file. So it's a private bug bounty program where he was able to access, as you can see here, the HT pass WD file, which contains the hashed password of a certain user. And then he was able to crack that password. And I believe he used John the Ripper here with the crack station word list. Then he was able to access the following assets with the same username and password that he was able to crack. Another problem of the security misconfiguration is default credentials. Well, this is probably one of the most trivial issues, but it happens so often due to security misconfiguration. Default credentials ship with a lot of solutions. You find them in web applications, network devices, and in anything which requires authentication. Sadly, they don't get changed after installation, opening the door wide open to attackers. We will explore a great example shortly. Now let's move to cloud misconfiguration. In fact, cloud has offered many advantages to companies that nowadays they can spin up a whole data center in a matter of minutes. 
using like things like infrastructure as code without worrying about the lack of resources. However, with the freedom comes responsibility. In fact, companies must adhere to the shared responsibility model. The following chart from AWS shows how the customer is responsible for the configuration part of the resources deployed in the cloud. Sadly, we see more and more breaches as a result of security misconfiguration in the cloud. For example, Amazon S3 misconfigurations alone result in more than 400k Google results, including many security breaches of well-known companies. And then we have network and security device misconfiguration. Network engineers might relax network device configurations, especially when troubleshooting a network problem. However, they tend to forget about it afterwards. Therefore, an attacker can potentially access an internal asset performing reverse shells without restrictions, etc. Also, security solutions like IDS and IPSS or SIM might be configured to open the door for security vulnerabilities. In fact, a hosting provider's support team forgot a bind shell during an intervention which allowed to deface a security researcher's blog post. Let's see that. So the page in, is in French, but let me open it in Chrome and translate it. And right away we have, but a week ago my site was unavailable due to maintenance. It all started on May 1st. I got to my site like every day for daily updates. And it is then that appears a nice deface made by a group of hackers with a message in rough English, your security is bad, go patch, blah, blah. This is a well-respected security researcher. In fact, he runs a blog post called dailysecurity.fr. He's a French guy. And uh, he sent some support, a support ticket. And you can see that the conversation is hilarious with the support team, but the most important thing for us is how this vulnerability happened. And here it is. The port had been opened in a very old intervention and had not been closed properly. So this is a clear uh, firewall security misconfiguration that opened the door to an attacker to gain access to a security researcher's blog. In the following section, we will explore some real-world security misconfiguration attacks. I'm so excited to show you how this vulnerability is rocking it in the wild. Let's start with this awesome Nahamsek stream. If you don't see it, I highly recommend you go and watch it. In this stream, Gentleman explains how he earned a generous bounty. In fact, he found a security misconfiguration in the SSO redirection, which allowed him to reach a password protected page. And finally, he logged in using default credentials. You can say from mid of November to the first five days of January, I made maybe 90K, 90K thousand dollars from in, in a matter of a month, like three bucks. Uh, it's actually not a rocket science box, like it was easy bucks. Two of them was uh, a host that get, gets you redirected to the SSO of PayPal, mm -hmm. their own SSO. I did directory search and didn't follow the redirects. So I found an endpoint yeah. that accessible without going to the SSO. It was a, a login page for the product itself. Using the default credentials, I was able to login because they didn't expect someone will find this one. The problem of security misconfigurations gets even worse when databases suffer from it. In this great article, we learn how MongoDB prior to version 2.6.0 binds to all interfaces, which makes it publicly accessible. So this is a report from uh, sneak.io and it explains that in versions upper than 2.6.0, MongoDB includes a default configuration that binds Mongo to localhost by default. But before version 2.6.0, that wasn't true. So by default, MongoDB was mainly exposed to the public if you don't change the default configuration. In this report, the bug bounty hunter found an admin, a default admin RabbitMQ console credentials, which allowed him to access all the queues and messages containing sensitive data. And also he had the right to create, edit and delete queues, etc. Regarding security misconfiguration impact, generally, 
Security misconfiguration leads to sensitive data exposure. You've seen that in the previous sections. Therefore, this opens the door to impact confidentiality, integrity, and availability depending on the context. And one thing to mention here is make sure that what you found is actually exploitable. If you want to see the remaining part about security misconfiguration prevention, I invite you to read the blog post linked in the description box. That was it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and enable notifications so that you know when a new video is up. Until then, stay curious, learn new things and go find some fun.